Yo, what is going on guys? We are back today for another video and we're going to be counting down the top 10 best champions in a specific class. However, before we get into that list, I just need to talk about a couple of disclaimers. And that's basically, you know, when it comes to my tier list, you know, that is not my just my opinion. That is my channel, my community's tier list. And I use all your guys' thoughts and opinions uh, plus my own to go ahead and make that these types of videos this is just my completely my opinion on top 10 best champs um and my opinion is going to be different than everyone else's it's going to be different than yours and your opinion should also be different than everyone else's because our opinions are based on our own personal experience playing this game i've been playing this game for almost like seven years and no one is going to have the same exact game experience as me throughout all those seven years but we all pulled different champions we've all put in time into different champions we've we are all in different communities and see different st things so like th th there's no way we should all have the exact same opinions and that's that's not a bad thing that's actually a good thing um so if you disagree with this that's fine that's normal to be expected let's just keep things nice and civil in the comments and yeah without any further ado let's go ahead and get into it all right, so we are going to be counting down the top 10 best tech champions currently in the game at this point in 2023, halfway through the year, more than halfway through the year now. And uh, we're going to start off with a couple of honorable mentions. So the first honorable mention that we actually both of these honorable mentions are 2023 champions. Now, the reason they don't make the actual list, even though I think they have potential to is it's because for me, it's still just too early. We also have not heard anything about their rebalancing yet. And uh, I'm not really too sure where they're going to end up. So that is reason, one of the main reasons why they are not any higher on this list. But they, I did want to give them a special shout out, an honorable mention. So that is Lady Deathstrike. She seems very great. But again, she just came out. I still need to see a lot more. I'm not fully convinced yet. I think she has potential to be top 10, but still a bit early, so she's only getting an honorable mention. And then our other honorable mention is Shocker. So I like Shocker. I think he looks fantastic. I think he has a pretty all right set of abilities. I I just don't think it's quite enough, personally, for me. He just doesn't quite do it for me. Um, Again, his rebalancing should be one of the next ones. Shocker and Sam, I believe, are next. So maybe he'll get a little bit of love. Maybe he'll get tuned up a tiny bit. I don't know. Um, I do think he definitely has potential, but does not quite cut it for this top 10 list. All right, those are the two honorable mentions I wanted to talk about before we got into the actual list. Now let's go ahead and just jump to the 10th spot. So the 10th best tech champion in the game at this point in time, in my opinion is Mysterio. And that is why I went ahead and took him up to rank two. As a seven star, I think Mysterio scales extremely well. And just being available as a seven star can definitely get you higher in these types of videos, in these types of lists. Because to me, the way I look at the game, if a champion is available as a seven star, that's an advantage over a champion that isn't available as a seven star, you know? Just, that's just the way I look at things. And so, especially like with stat focus, stat focus can really boost champions like Mysterio. You know, I can increase his crit rate, which is massive because with Mysterio, after you go for a special three, he gets an absolute absurd amount of attack rating. You can see 14,000 attack rating. And uh, you, it, it lasts for 10 seconds plus an additional four seconds for each gas. You can have three gases. So that's more than double the initial time. You can get up to 22 seconds with having 14,000 attack rating. Your damage output is just ridiculous. Then you add on the precision crit uh, or the, the precision stat focus to increase your crits. And with all that attack, you're critting more. You're just doing so much damage. It's, it's incredible. It's it's incredible, man. It's one specialty rotation with Mysterio, and you the numbers you're churning out, wow, wow. You know, not to mention his poison damage as well. Um, his poison potency is increased by three hundred percent after this. 
So, like, you can get some really, really fat poisons, dude. It's nuts. Uh, you know, Mysterio is immune to poison uh, at his base. And, uh, well, as long as he's not, uh, you know, knocked down by a Spider-Verse hero or armor broken. And his ability actually also cannot be decreased. Again, as long as he's not knocked down by Spider-Verse or armor broken. Uh, which is some nice utility to have. It definitely is some nice utility to have. He also has access to heal block. If you end your combo with a light attack, you apply a passive heal block, which is pretty nice. Um, and yeah, Mysterio, he's just, I'd say he's fairly underrated. He also, you know, looks fantastic. But I think coming as a 7-star has really kind of shined some more light back on Mysterio and kind of made him a lot more relevant. Because, like, if Mysterio wasn't available as a 7-star, he probably wouldn't have made this list, to be honest. Um... But because he is, I, again, I think that's done wonders for the character. And I think that's done wonders for a lot of other champions as seven stars as well. So that is Mysterio coming in at the number 10 spot. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the number 9 spot. And that is probably my all-time favorite champion in the game, Stark Enhanced Spider-Man. Now, you know, if, if I was making this video the year this guy came out, he would be number 1. He'd be, like, number one in the entire game if I was making, like, a top ten list when he came out. Um, but, yeah, these days, he's not at the top of the tech class, but I definitely think he still is top ten. He, he I, I just, I have the, the most softest spot in my heart for this character, and I always will, because I literally would not be, you would not be watching this video today if this character never came out. Um, I, I wouldn't even be do doing YouTube for this game, most likely, if if this character never came out. Like, <laughs> he literally changed my life, this character. Completely changed the trajectory of my life altogether, which is pretty crazy to think about that just, you know, a character in a mobile game can do that. But he did. And, uh, you know, he, he still is an absolutely incredible champion. He is just one of the hardest hitting champs in the game with ba basically, you know, very easy build up you know all you have to do is dex just dex 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 build some poise charges that's it and then all of a sudden you hit like an absolute freight train it's just ridiculous um i think stark spidey would be a very good candidate as a seven star um i was kind of actually predicting that he would be within that first seven star batch but he wasn't which kind of sucks maybe command thinks he's too powerful i don't know uh, I do think he would scale really great as a 7-star, though. Put on the block, give him some block proficiency. Uh, that's definitely what he could use for stat focus. Because uh, he's a bit of a glass cannon type character. Um, but yeah, he does also have some utility. You know, he was, I'm pretty sure, I am almost certain that Stark Spidey was the first ever character to introduce the taunt mechanic to the game, which is really cool. You know, making opponents throw special attacks, uh, and he also has you know his own type of uh, ev special attack evasion with the Stark Tech AI, granting him you know 60% uh, evasion on special attacks, which is uh, you know pretty 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 great at, at, at its time. You know, when Spider-Man came out, that was a really really big piece of utility. I remember I would always bring Stark Spider-Man against like any new champs because. You know, with new champs, you don't really know how to evade their specials. So I would just bring Stark Spidey. He would just auto evade it all for me. It was, uh, it was great. Honestly, I feel like, I feel like he used to be bugged at, at one point. It's, it's either he was bugged or like my, my belief, my faith in the character just worked. Cause like, I swear, man, when I used to play Stark Spidey, he would just always, like always auto evade special attacks. Like it's, it's only supposed to be a 60% chance. But when I used to play him like 2017, 2018, it felt like 85%. Um, so I don't know. I, and now when I play him, he doesn't, it, he doesn't auto evade those special attacks nearly as much. Now it definitely does feel like a 60%. But, but what I used to say to myself was just like, I just, I believed in the character so much that he would just evade more for me. So maybe that's true. Maybe he was bugged. I don't know, man. But Stark Spidey still, and will always be my favorite champion overall in the game. And uh, he lands at that number nine spot. He's still definitely, you know, an absolute tremendous champion. But there's just been so many more characters added to the game since he was that have just so many more new crazy abilities and damage to match. So let's go ahead now and get into the number eight spot. And that is a champion who got buffed. And that is 
Ultron. So Ultron used to be not the best. He used to just be okay. He really lacked damage, but he did have some nice utility. You know, Ultron has great used to have great utility, you know, just being a robot uh, gives him access to bleed and poison immunity, which is phenomenal. And then, you know, he also had the regeneration. And I, I'm a really big fan of the way Ultron's regeneration works. And I, I've i always wanted to see more characters have that type of regeneration implemented into, into their kits. Whereas basically, you know, once you hit a threshold, you trigger the regen and you heal back a guaranteed amount or whatever. Uh, with Ultron, I believe it's what, 50% and 25%. And if you hit the regen at 25%, you can get back up to 50% and then trigger the second second regen, which is really great. Um, so, you know, Ultron's always had that, that base utility. Then he got buffed and he, you know, he kept the bleed and poison immunity. He kept the regen the way it was. And he got so, so, so much more. He got a new signature ability. Um, I'm pretty sure he always had the, the energy damage thing. But he got a new a new thing added here, and that's incoming incinerate and shock effects suffer minus a percent duration based on the sig level. And at max sig, it's like I believe it's 80 or 90 percent. So, like all of a sudden, Ultron went from having you know immunity to bleed and poison to basically having immunity to bleed and poison, and basically pseudo immunity to incinerate and shock effects at max sig. So it basically doubled his utility, which is insane. <laughs> and then, you know, they gave him so much more damage. So Ultron hits way harder now, too. Ultron's buff, absolutely incredible. And honestly, I, I wanted to put Ultron higher on the list. It's just, I really don't see him much, ever. I don't see him being used often anywhere. And, you know, in, in the game mode that I care the absolute most about, Battlegrounds, I've seen him in, like, a couple of decks every now and then, but I don't ever see him get drafted, let alone get actually used in matches. So, I don't know, I just can't really put him higher based off of, you know, I don't really use him. So, I know how powerful he is, but I don't personally run him, because I just, I just think there's better options. And I think a lot of other people think that as well maybe that's why we don't see him too much but ultron is a very powerful champion and uh he's landing in that number eight spot all right let's go ahead and move on now to the number seven spot and now this is the first champion where well i guess mysterio kind of is a more defensive as well but penny parker penny parker is a dual threat for sure but definitely more focusing on the defensive side penny parker at her base is like one of the most bs defensive champions you know in the game like if you don't bring a correct counter and let's say you don't know exactly how to fight her like it's just gonna be horrible it's just gonna suck so much it's just it's terrible and even if you do know how to fight her and you still don't bring a counter it's still gonna suck because you're just gonna have to hit into her block like 20 times to break it to break her shield so that you don't get auto blocked and it's just yeah it's, it's, she's very very annoying to fight however you know penny parker when she came out she was much, you know one of the best defenders in the entire game but then of course kabam started releasing the cosmic goats like gallon like hulkling that just absolute hard hard counter penny so that definitely took away a lot of her defensive uh, potential but, uh, you know, if, if those champions aren't in the conversation, then, yeah, she's still a really great defender. Um, but, you know, Penny is a good attacker as well, which is why she is so high on this list. She she's, she does good on attack as well. Um, not my favorite to use personally, but, you know, I, I can't use that as a, too much of an excuse. It, it, she's not too bad to use. You know, there's a couple special ones, special two, and you're killing a lot of things. So, Penny landing in that number 7 spot. Right, let's go ahead and move on now to the number 6 spot. And we have a failed Summoner Showdown. Not Summoner Showdown. Uh, what is it called? Uh, summoner Champion Choice? Failed? <laughs> uh, that is Omega Sentinel. So... It, in the very first ever voting for to vote a champ into the game, 
uh, the final was between Hercules and Omega Sentinel. And Omega Sentinel lost, but she sounded very promising. And then this, I think this Omega Sentinel is a little bit different than the one that we would have gotten, you know, if she had won the vote. I think she would have been a little bit more powerful, um, or maybe a lot more powerful, but she still is a phenomenal champion. I'd say the only, the only and biggest downside to Omega Sentinel is her play style. It's just, it's not the most seamless. It's a little clunky and a little annoying to maintain, I would say. And I'd say that's her biggest drawback. But if you can get past that, and a lot of people are past that and just really like the character, um, she's very powerful. She, she is just jam-packed, loaded with utility. Just so, so much utility. She has three debuffs that she can utilize, all giving her a different piece of utility. One being a cowardice debuff, uh, which reduces special attack damage, and you know, it's good against some mutants, which she's a tech champ and specialized in hunting mutants, so you know, that's a, a debuff definitely can come in handy. Then she has a heal block debuff, which is very powerful, just completely block healing. And then she has a tracking debuff, which can bypass the effects of miss. And of course, you know, all these debuffs have an eight second duration, but they can be refreshed and paused indefinitely. So the duration doesn't matter too much. Uh, and the way to, you know, pause your debuffs is to end a combo with a light attack or use a heavy attack, but the heavy attack will also then rotate to then apply a different debuff going forward. To apply debuffs, just medium, medium combos or just end a combo in a medium and you'll apply whatever debuff you're on. Of course, she's also a robot, so that gives her immunity to bleed and poison, which is very nice, but she actually still gets the debuffs on her. Um, however, she doesn't take any damage from them, and instead she gains a self-repair buff. Um, so in, I'd say, majority of matchups, that's better than just having straight immunities because she's, you know, she's also getting some regen, and because as robots, they do not get the benefit of the willpower mastery. So that is a nice little loophole to that you know with omega sentinel's abilities however there are some matchups that do end up punishing that that she still gains the bleed and the poison for example void just having debuffs on you void will then deal damage to you so not being fully immune to them not good in a scenario like that just for example and there's a lot more of those types of scenarios that can pop up uh but uh all that said Omega Sentinel also has a very good signature ability. She can get energy resistance for each of her non-damage debuffs on the opponent, which is, you know, pretty nice. Decent amount of energy resistance. Uh, but the real big thing with her signature ability is the armor-ups. So, uh, Omega Sentinel gains these armor-ups, and on defense, it's very annoying because if she gets too many of them, she can auto-block him. She can do the same on attack, but obviously it's a lot more of a threat when she's defending. Now, the great thing about Omega Sentinel's um, signature ability is that at max sig, it's 50% chance for her to um, to gain a new armor up uh, when it's consumed. So usually, you know, it, you, you bait out her special attacks and it gets rid of her armor so that, you know, you can safely go back and attack without getting auto-blocked. But with the signature ability, you know, you there's a chance she won't lose any of her armor ups. Um, that she, when she uses her special attack. So it can really, really, really help and screw people over defensively. And it can also really help you offensively. Those armors make her ridiculously tanky, especially paired with the cowardice. If you have 10 armors and like just one cowardice debuff and your opponent uses a special three, you're not going to take that much damage. Um, and it's, it's very nice. So those armors make her very tanky offensively and uh, very annoying defensively with the auto block. So I think all around, Omega Sentinel is an extremely well-rounded champion. Again, biggest drawback is just a bit of a clunky play style is how I'd best call it. But very powerful champion and just jam-packed, loaded with abilities and utility. But uh, that is number six. All right, coming in at the number five spot now, and that is a tried and true tech champion ever since he came out, and that is Warlock. 
So man, Warlock has always just... Uh, Warlock was actually one of the very first champions that I, it, I went on like a massive hunt for. Uh, Warlock eluded me for like almost, I think, a year. Or maybe it was a year. I, I just wanted this guy very badly. Uh, I was really, really impressed when I first tested him uh, for like the CCP. But I just could not pull him. Just could not pull him for the longest, longest time finally got him as a six star version eventually and he was my very first ever tech rank four champion and i took him up to signature level 200 which is really great for warlock because uh that gives him a lot more damage basically it just deals degener extra degeneration damage um which you know can definitely be a very big deal when it comes to battlegrounds so, you know, Warlock being the robot that he is, he has immunity to the bleed and the poison, but he also has cold snap immunity. So, you know, that makes him a good Iceman counter, which ever since Iceman was buffed, that is a lot more of a relevant thing to have. So, cold snap immunity is very good, plus class advantage there as well. But, you know, what Warlock does best, does better than anyone, is heal block. And the reason he does it the best and better than anyone else is because it's not a heal block. It's, it's something else, uh, you know, it's it's a virus, and, you know, what, what, all he has to do is make contact, uh, and this also makes fighting Warlock annoying, because just makes it, you have to kill him, you know, you gotta hit him, you gotta, you gotta make contact, so you end up getting heal blocked on yourself, and if, then if you have any type of uh, debuff on you, and you're trying to heal, or any type of regen, well, that's active, you just, your power is just being drained, and you're just being degen, again, based on his sig, so... Warlock definitely can be a defensive threat as well. Plus, when he has his armor uh, buff active, which he always has it active, and, and it comes back if he loses it, um, you know, then he can't be crit on like, with special attacks. So that's that's a very interesting thing as well. He also has a little bit of uh, utility with his heavy attack, applying a bleed debuff, which definitely uh, can be useful with his loop. And then you know, special two applies some armor breaks. This can do some nice damage. Although their armor break immunity is a lot more of a common thing these days, so this is not nearly as powerful as it used to be. And when Warlock came out, like I think the, I think like that year, the only armor break immunity champs I can even like remember would be, I think like Doctor Doom. I think they came out in the same year, and then I think like Thing came out next year, who's also armor break immune. But yeah, when Warlock came out, armor break immunity was pretty scarce. So, you know, it used to be a, a lot more reliable. But these days, so many champs immune to it um, or get a benefit from it. You know, like Rentra, if you armor break him, he gets more attack. And I don't think they, they, they lower his armor. Sasquatch is immune to it. Like I said, Dr. Doom, Thing, immune to it. Uh, Absorbing Man, immune to it. Like, armor break immunity, it's a common, common thing these days. So, not nearly as good. But, you know, Warlock, the special three can also give you some uh, some regen based on how many infections you have. So that, that, that is nice. Yeah, man, Warlock, you know, he's not a complicated champ. You guys all know how Warlock works. He's just tried and true, very well-rounded, great champ. And uh, I, th I think, you know, Warlock was voted for uh, to be into the Titan pool, which is, was really great to see. So Warlock is going to be coming as a seven star. And I think that'll be really great for him. Because we talked about Warlock Sig a fair bit already, and it's great, but it's definitely not needed. It is not needed by any means. So an unduped 7-star Warlock is going to be insane. It's going to be so good. Um, like, if Warlock wasn't coming as a 7-star, I probably would have switched him in Omega Sentinel's order. But because he is, that is massive. Getting, getting stat focus on Warlock, it's going to be huge. Um, you, I think the way to go will just be precision. Give him, you know, more crit rating because Warlock has one of the highest critical damage ratings in the game. It's almost 300%. Um, uh, let's see, like, let's just compare that with some other champs here. Let's see, Stark Spidey, he's got 240%, which is still good. Let's see, Shuri, she's got, okay, wow, Shuri's is even higher. Shuri is busted though, you know, her, her base stats are crazy. Let's see Omega Sentinels. What What is her base crit damage? Yeah, 210%. So yeah, Warlock, Warlock's a super high man. Let's see, Infamous Iron Man, his is not even 200%. So, you know, Warlock, for a long time, he, he held the title of the largest critical damage rating in the game. So I think just, you know, giving him more chances to crit as a 7-star 
going to be really big for him. Going to be a big damage increase, especially on those special twos with those armor breaks. Woo! Seven Star Warlock is going to be a beast. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the number four spot. Now the fourth best tech champ in the game. And I think that is future Ant-Man. So future Ant-Man, we have gotten his rebalance information. And it's very interesting because future Ant-Man has basically been bugged the entire time for his entire life. Ever since this champion was born, he's been bugged and not working properly, which the way he should be working properly is his glancing should be a lot more effective so if you think right now if Dram man is an annoying defender once his rebalancing changes go through he's going to be even worse he's going to be an even bigger defensive threat which is huge for him because i think he is already an incredible defender and i have i don't just think that i know that from my own personal testing just putting him on defensive battlegrounds, he has gotten me many wins. He's just straight up killed people and won me rounds I didn't deserve to win. So, yeah, after he's rebalanced, he's going to be even tankier, which is pretty hard to believe because he's already a massive tank. Uh, Future Ant-Man was one of the very few champions um, in the meta where Ghost just shined. You know, Ghost was basically the best champion in the entire meta because you know five bleed debuffs become five fury passives and you can basically one shot most champions with special two however future ant-man could not be one shotted by ghost i learned that the hard way trying these ghosts against him because future ant-man has a special ability when awakened the third bullet point here when Ant-Man would lose more than 10% of his max health from a single source other than a special 3, reduce the damage to 10% of his max health. So he basically implements a damage cap when you would try to do more than 10% of his max health. So boom, he damage caps you, can't deal more than 10%. This also works against champions like Gallon. You know, Gallon's Harvest doesn't bypass that. It gets capped. Um, and then, so he also then gets a self-repair regenerate healing buff. So he gets regen healing 5% of max health over 12 seconds. So he's going to heal back more than half the damage that he took. Like, the safety nets that this character has in place is crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's kind of hard to die with him. And again, he's bugged. He's not even working properly. So he's going to become even tankier once those rebalancing changes go through. Once those rebalancing changes go through, I think he could be higher on the list. But as he is in his current state, he places at number four. Again, in my opinion, uh, I have him at rank five. So, you know, my, my opinion is, I'd say valid because um, I've used him a fair bit. Uh, and I do like him. I really do like him. Now, I really think the signature ability is really worth investing in, mainly for the top point, which bleed and incinerate effects. So that's effects. So it includes uh, debuffs and passives suffer 90% duration. This is very similar to Ultron's signature ability with shock and incinerate. Just instead of shock and incinerate, it's bleed and incinerate. Um, and I think bleed and incinerate is a little bit better because bleed is fairly common. So very, very powerful signature ability. And uh, yeah, Future Ant-Man can get out massive, massive damage uh, in red with, with that special too. You get some really big numbers going and yeah like i said he's just a very safe champion to play all around very well rounded and yeah very keen to play him after he's rebalanced just to see see the difference but at this current state of the game at this point in time he lands in the number four spot all right now we're getting to the top three now if you guys watch the tier list you'll know who these are uh coming in the number three spot we have shuri so like we just accidentally discovered shuri has an even higher base critical damage rating than warlock who like i said had that title of highest crit damage rating in the game i think he held that title for years shuri's is higher it's insane it's insane shuri is just similar to omega sentinel in the fact that she is just jam-packed loaded with so many things so many things in her kit that it's just like wow and one of my favorite things about shuri is that she's totally fine unawakened so the fact so the fact that she's fine unawakened and she's in the seven star base pool 
basically makes her easily, in my opinion, a top three. Top three pull from the current seven star basic pool. Easily. Because again, unduped, boom. That's all you need. Just pull Shuri one time and you're good. Rank one, unduped. She's going to keep up with rank five, six stars, with other rank two, seven stars. It's just crazy. I have a Shuri video if you want to see uh, me back up that claim that I just said. Uh, I'm literally winning battleground matches against seven star rank twos, rank fives with her, using her on defense against people attacking with rank twos, rank fives, and she's holding up. Not only is she a, a very good attacker, she is a powerful defender because her her attacks are all non-contact, which means she cannot be parried. So you'll you'll just never parry stun Shuri unless you have a champion that can use the parry mastery against non-contact attacks, which I believe Quicksilver has that ability. So he should be able to parry Shuri uh, and other champions that have that ability. It's a quite a rare ability. I think only, like, I'm pretty sure less than 10 champions have it. Um, so, you know, not, not a ton of champs have it. But um, it's a powerful one. And without it, Shuri is very annoying to fight. Very annoying to fight. Her special attacks also create a lot of distance. So if you're not, you know, evading the last hit or even the whole thing perfectly, it's hard to punish them. Which, again... It's already hard to get openings because you can't just parry. So it really prolongs fights. Now, Shuri, again, though, since those attacks are non-contact, this allows her to counter, for example, Atuma. And, for example, Korg. She can just not take any of those thorns or, you know, any type of that, that, that damage because she's not making contact. She's dealing, and it's energy damage. So she's just completely safe from taking any kind of that damage which which is really nice now shuri has even more utility that i haven't talked about she doesn't gain the dex buff so this allows her to fight mystic champions and you know not worry about mystic dispersion her ability accuracy also cannot be lowered period so it makes her an excellent domino counter but even outside of the domino matchup she she still can't have that ability actually lowered. So it can make her, I believe, immune to neutralize as well, like fighting Arintra. Just all kinds of little, little things in her kit that just make her crazy. And so far, we've only been talking about the utility side of her, not to mention the damage. The damage that Shuri can churn out after her rebalancing, it's just bonkers. Before she was rebalanced, she, you know, she it seemed like she was meant for endgame content, like Abyss and stuff. After the rebalance, she seems like she's meant for whatever, anything, battlegrounds, endgame content, short fights, quick fights, doesn't matter. She's just so well-rounded now, it's absurd. It's it, it's absurd. I'm so, so happy that I was able, lucky enough to pull a 7-star version of her. Um, and yeah, really, really highly, highly rate Shuri. Alright, only two champions left on the list now, guys. Let's go ahead and get into it. So coming in at the number two spot, we have Nimrod. Now, Nimrod has less utility than Shuri, I would say, and probably less utility than future Ant-Man as well. Well, no, maybe, maybe I wouldn't say that, but I, I definitely would say Shuri has more utility than Nimrod. However, the great thing about Nimrod is, you know, and I'll, I would also say Omega Sentinel has more utility than Nimrod as well, but again... Nimrod, the reason why he's so high on this list is because he's the opposite of, of Omega Sentinel. Like I said, her playstyle, you know, clunky, annoying. Nimrod's the complete opposite. It's seamless. It's not annoying at all. It's it's easy. You just play him normally, you know. Parry. Build your special two. Drop it at the right time. And just watch the damage. Like, he's such a simple character to play. And I love that. It really works for Nimrod. Um, his signature ability is also... I highly recommend it. But it's, again, it's definitely not needed. Uh, it's basically just going to increase your damage even more on that special 2. And uh, if you're uh, fighting a mutant, just being Sig 1 is, is really beneficial to Nimrod uh, against mutants. Because you're going to gain an additional armor up. And armor ups are what Nimrod's all about. Because the more armor ups that he has gives more special two damage uh or where is it listed is it just under 
Special attacks. Yeah, so in the Blitz protocol, which is the orange one, which is the, the protocol that you want to be in uh, to, you know, get the shocks. If you're just in the Titan protocol and you're not at 10 of his charges to activate both of them, you're not going to be seeing any damage on that special too. But uh, in the Blitz protocol, attacks have 1500 attack rating uh, plus 25% potency per armor up. So just you want to stack as many armor ups as you can then drop a big special two, and just the damage is ridiculous. So that's how Nimrod gets the damage. It's very easy. The loop is simple. But Nimrod does still have utility. A lot of utility. Again, if you're in that blitz mode, the orange mode, uh, every time you attack an opponent that has a regeneration effect or a prowess effect, you're going to take it away and replace it with a shock debuff. So that's very nice. He can counter healing and he can counter prowess. But what Nimrod does best is hunts the mutants. Nimrod is, so Sentinel, you know, is a mutant hunter. Nimrod is basically like the future version of Sentinel, uh, like just the ultimate mutant hunting machine. That's what Nimrod is. That's what he was made and designed to do in the comics. And I feel like Kabam did a really good job implementing that into the game because like the only mutants, you know, Nimrod isn't just, you know, the go-to counter for is basically Bishop because Bishop has insane energy resistance. And uh, yeah, it, Nimrod versus Bishop, not a good time, but basically, you know, 98% of the other mutants in the game, Nimrod is just going to eat them alive in one special too. So he can basically hard counter almost an entire class. Plus, as long as the opponent's not shock immune, he's going to be a good option for it. So Nimrod just absolutely incredible. He also does have power drain. However, I'm not the biggest fan of the way Nimrod's power drain works because it's dependent on the opponent throwing their special, which sometimes you just get a bad AI and they just will not throw it. And it's, it's going to be frustrating. Uh, that, that would that would be probably my only gripe with Nimrod's kit. I wish his power drain worked. I, I wish there was uh, some way to, to better control it uh, than you know having to rely on the opponent's AI. Or maybe if he had some kind of taunt mechanic or or some type of passive mechanic to to get the opponent to throw their special a little bit more. I feel like that would be nice. But can't complain. Nimrod he, he, the way he is, like he's second best tech champ in the game in my opinion. So. Yeah, even the way he is, it's still great. And it's still very useful for sure. So that's Nimrod coming in at the number two spot. And coming in at the number one spot, I'm sure you guys already know who it is. And that is Ghost. Ghost is just the best tech champ in the game. She was regarded as the best champ in the game for, for, for a while. Some people used to say Quake better than Ghost. However, you know, Ghost was a six star. Quake was locked as a five star. So big difference in that one extra star and yeah ghost is tried and true should probably always be the best tech champ you know it's just it's nearly nearly impossible to put anyone above ghost just because of how busted she is like it, we all know how good ghost is if, if you're not already aware she's basically immune to every single damage over time effect in the game as long as it's in debuff form because it's in, if it's in debuff form, she can phase it and turn it into fury. Just turn it into damage. And it, and it doesn't matter what it is. Bleed, shock, poison, degen, rupture, disintegration. Doesn't matter. If it's a debuff and it deals damage over time, Ghost can phase it, turn it into fury. For just that ability alone, <laughs> that's insane. That is insane. Not to mention, she has... She created... A whole new play style of implementing the miss mechanic and using that to intercept create intercepts phase intercepts which count as actual intercepts so she basically can just create her own play style play how she wants bypass all the normal fight fighting mechanics of the game you know parrying actually intercepting baiting heavy attacks she just doesn't have to do all that so that's nice. She can phase any debuff. She has guaranteed crits. So if you play her properly, 
to get special two to, twos to crit. Um, she can get even more damage if you just throw a heavy attack. There's a chance to get cruelty and fury. So like, <sighs> it's just bonkers. And then and then you know all that on top of all that, you get her awakened. You get her sig up, and every single miss that you take in, into your phase just gives you power. So you can get to the special two even faster. Like, it, it's just one of the most busted kits we, we've ever seen. The, the, the only thing that holds Ghost back is that some of her best um, abilities are locked behind synergies. That is literally the only thing holding Ghost back. Um... If these synergies were all in her base kit, huh, holy crap, she'd, she'd probably be the best champ in the entire game. She'd probably be better than Hercules, would she? I don't know, maybe Hercules would still be the best, but she'd probably be number two, guaranteed. Because these synergies are just nuts. With Hood, you take no damage while phasing, which is what Kitty has in her in her base kit. Ghost needs a synergy to get it, but with that synergy, it's crazy. You can, you can take special threes no damage with wasp uh special attacks are unblockable when triggered while phasing which you just dash back and throw it boom it's unblockable it guaranteed to crit it does a lot of damage and then with ant-man 15 percent attack rating for each buff on ghost and like i said you can just throw some heavies to get even more buffs on you so yeah with, with, with all those synergies it's crazy i think it's a good thing that there's synergies though because ghost would just be so bust if that was in her base kit It'd be fun, but pretty busted. But yeah, guys, that's the number one spot. We all knew it was going to be Ghost. So that is my top 10 ranking for the for the tech class. And wow, this video went on so much long. This was supposed to be like a 20-minute video. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, we, we, did, we did a poll. Normally, I do top five, and they usually go pretty long. Um, but I felt like, I don't know, top 10 would be cool. And, and I made a poll, and you guys, the yeah, it was a vast majority. It was like 80% what it's for this to be top 10 format so top 10 just means these are going to be a fair bit longer but i hope you guys enjoyed uh the longevity of these videos uh drop a like if you enjoyed the top 10 list i i'm sure you don't agree with everything and that, like i said that's normal that's cool but do let me know what you disagree with and let me know why maybe we can start a discussion in the comments but again let's keep it civil thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed more of these top 10 rankings to come peace out